Now we will talk about the history of social work in UK. The social upheaval and mass migration contributed significantly to the evolution of social work in the UK. The population of cities were increasing dramatically during the Industrial Revolution and many people were afflicted by poverty and diseases. The UK government responded by offering free treatment in the hospitals and hospital almers were recruited for this job to help the poor patients. These almers were regarded as social workers and their roles began to include other social responsibilities in the following years. Social work in the UK developed as a philanthropic activity on the margins of statutory services. Social work in the 20th century became increasingly a professional activity, either carried out directly by the state or carried out by the voluntary sector on its behalf. Social work has been incorporated statutorily uh, into statutory mechanisms since the, its high tide in the 1970s. Not only has the state won the right to intervene and influence the lives of the individuals, but also to decide that how these lives of the individuals will be controlled, how and by whom. Voluntary social welfare work agencies cannot now function without some measure of control over their activities by the local authority and by the legislature. Uh, even in the era of care management in the community, it is the local authority which inspects voluntary institutions and give out uh, contracts for work on its behalf. In, in English history, we see that legislation relating to public assistance for the poor, early measures to relieve pauperism were usually designed to suppress vagrancy and begging. In 1601, England passed the Elizabethan Poor Relief Act, which recognized the state's responsibility, state's obligation towards the needy and the deserving people of the community. It provides for compulsory local levies to, to be administered by the parish, and it required work for the able-bodied poor and apprenticeship, apprenticeship for the needy children. Local reluctance to support the poor from other areas led to settlement laws limited the migration. Institutional relief was provided by poor houses where the aged, sick or insane were grouped together. From uh, 1700 century, workhouses were established where the poor were expected uh, to support themselves by work. However, because of widespread unemployment and low wages, it became customary in the, in the late 18th century to uh, give home relief. Poor Law Amendments of 1834 sought to establish uniform uh, policy of assistance by placing relief under national supervision. They curtailed human relief and modified the settlement uh, laws. Those amendments uh, assumed that pauperism stamped partly from unwillingness uh, to work on the part of the unemployed people of the community instead of uh, inadequate employment opportunities. As a result, poor relief was maintained at a level below that of the poorest labor. The Local Government Act of 1929 established the basis for a more for reaching and human approach to the conditions of the poor and to solve the problems of the deserving people in the, in the community. After the Second World War, we see the scope and variety of provisions outside the poor law rapidly increased. There were, however, a number of gaps and anomalies in the provisions. Nearly every scheme was administered by a different authority. Besides, all workers were not covered by these insurance schemes. Some were covered by one scheme, but not by the other. Similarly, there was no special provision for protection of dependents of the large families. Those whose needs were not otherwise met still had to have recourse to local poor law relief. 
so far the development of provision against poverty from various causes and uh, proceeded piecemeal without coordination in june 1941 sir william beveridge was entrusted with the task of surveying the existing national schemes of insurance and allied services his report was presented to the british parliament in the year 1942 and since then it has been implemented by various acts of the parliament the main recommendation of the reports were the recommendation of the reports amounted to a comprehensive plan for a unified system of social insurance and social assistance on a national basis the report proposed a new system to overcome the deficiencies found in the existing arrangements of social welfare system instead of a multiplicity of authorities there should be one authority namely the ministry of social security besides the rates of uh, benefits for different contingencies should be uniform instead of uh, only part of the population being insured the whole population must be insured and protected and all within one group should pay one flat rate of contribution there should be no means tasked for any insurance benefit taking account only of a person's saving and other resources it is because management of one's income is an essential element of a citizen's freedom standing behind the social insurance schemes the report envisaged a scheme of national assistance for those who for one reason or another didn't satisfy the contribution or other contributions for benefit as regard worksmen compensation the report recommended that provision for industrial accident and occupational health hazards should be made through a scheme to be administered by the ministry of social security The British government accepted the beverage report as the basis on which the social security structure should be built after the war family allowances scheme was introduced in 1946 in 1948 national health service was created most of the recommendations were embodied in the national insurance and industrial injuries acts which came into force in 1948 to administer the scheme of family allowances national insurance and industrial injuries ministry of national insurance was set up in 1949 the poor law came to an end with the passing of national assistance act 